Welcome uh, everyone. Uh, this is my first Q&A. Um, my name is Dr. Kent Hungford from South Coast Foot Surgery. And today I'm going to be answering your questions. There's been quite a few people that have uh, emailed and messaged in wanting to know a little bit more about, uh, you know, how, how I could potentially help you, but more importantly, just answering questions in a sort of casual uh, type of way as well. Please feel free to put in some comments uh, into the chat box and we will hopefully be able to answer those as we go uh, now too. There's uh, quite a bit uh, that I would like to cover today, so we might jump in, but um, I'm, I'm waiting to hear uh, back from you as well with some of those questions too. Um, I hope everyone is staying well at the moment, obviously quite a uh, interesting time uh, around, um, but yeah throw those questions through and we'll help you in the best way that we can. Um, the first question I've got is from uh, Initials YW um, and they're explaining that they have bunions and that they're looking for options for surgery uh, and just that they've heard about uh, minimal incision foot surgery and uh, want to know a little bit more. So first of all, um, a bunion, uh, trying to sort of explain that over a video, we'll see how we go. Um, but basically a bunion is uh, a bump on your big toe joint and it can be um, on the inside of your foot but also on the outside of your foot. When we have these, they can be quite painful in shoes when we're walking and particularly in ladies wearing high heels, they can find that these become quite painful when they're um, in those high heels just because they're a little bit tighter as well. What we can do for bunions, uh, there's a few different options, um, starting conservatively because you know we definitely want to make sure if we can get away without surgery that we're looking at, a, at that as an option. Uh, when we do look at our conservative options for bunions, um, you know, just changing your footwear is a really powerful way to be able to help that. So we're talking a wider and a deeper uh, type of uh, forefoot uh, through your shoe and that can really help to decrease that pressure that you're getting at the moment. What we are then stepping up to um, in combination with that shoe is just increasing the efficiency of which uh, you can um, have your footwear um, and, and your foot, I suppose, the efficiency of what your foot is going to be functioning. And the way that we do that is through orthotics or inner soles in your shoes. Now, um, there's a lot of different research around this and we find that uh, different shoes uh, um, with uh, customised orthotics can be really effective to increase that efficiency um, of not only your foot, um, but also your legs, knees, hips, um, right through to your back. So that could be something that may be able to um, help you decrease your pain that you're experiencing. When we look at a surgical option uh, for bunions, there's quite a few different ways that this is approached. Um, after a review of x-rays and uh, when looking uh, in person, um, making sure that you're suitable, there are options including minimal incision surgery, which is something that I um, quite uh, like myself. When we undertake minimal incision surgery, basically it is uh, several small incisions uh, that are around sort of two to three millimeters uh, in length. And basically they just allow us to put a type of little burr, which looks a bit like a drill, I suppose. And that will uh, allow us to fix up how your bunion is looking. So removing that bump, but also moving across uh, part of your um, main bone um, there, which is your first metatarsal, so that it decreases how prominent and wide your foot is as well. When we do that, um, most people will have a really good outcome. And because of the minimal incision, it does mean that the skin heals uh, quite quickly, but bone will still take as long as what bone needs to heal, um, which is uh, a few weeks more. Recovery wise, um, all of my patients uh, will be in a um, post-op shoe and most patients uh, find that that's quite comfortable. It stops movement through that big toe joint in the early stages just so that we can uh, make sure that you know, we're increasing that healing longer term. Once the healing is uh, un uh, undertaken, then we can remove that shoe and you've generally got really good movement through that big toe joint. Um, that's generally around that four to six weeks, depending on how good your bone density is and how well uh, everything goes for you during that post-operative course uh, there too. Um, so I hope that's 
answered a bit of the bunion questions there. And for those just joining us, feel free to send through any questions that you've got into the comments here and I'll be able to answer those um, if we've got a bit of time. Got another question by uh, Initials KC and they're explaining that they've got arthritis of the foot um, and a little bit of heel pain as well. So I'll just read a bit about what they're saying. Um, I'm pretty sure I have arthritis in both feet do have bad heel pain on my right um, and this is the main discomfort um, working a little bit uh, and when we get home from work and stand up uh, we find that it's quite a bit painful uh, and standing there for a few seconds does help the um, and it's just saying as if the blood needs to circulate before I can move so first of all um, this does sound like a typical heel pain that we get quite of um, that we see quite a lot as podiatrists and as podiatric surgeons, and that's to do with um, our muscles and um, ligaments underneath our foot, and in particular the plantar fascia is um, one of the structures that we see quite a lot that's inflamed. Uh, and that can be called plantar fasciitis um, that we have heard of more oftenly, um, or as, as we like to uh, call it uh, medically, is a plantar fasciopathy, which encompasses a, a broader spectrum of conditions there. For this type of heel pain, yes, it's generally more painful uh, immediately after you get up in the morning because you've been laying down and it's, it's quite cool or cold at that stage. Once it's warmed up, it's generally a little bit better and that's generally uh, that first few steps in the morning that it takes just to uh, warm up again and uh, a lot of patients will feel better after those first few steps, but sometimes up to 10, 15 minutes as well. When it is taking this sort of time, generally we're finding that uh, it is going to be painful throughout the day too and that's sort of when we need to start looking at uh, getting on top of this and making sure that there are no problems. When we are looking at uh, heel pain, it's really important that we sort of approach this in a, a staged way. And, uh, you know, making sure that we have the right diagnosis as well, because there's quite a few different things that can cause heel pain. It's not just the plantar fascia. There's quite a few other different structures, um, including the heel bone, but also a lot of nerve uh, conditions that can be affected um, as well. When we look at management of heel pain, heel pain is quite well managed by stable, supportive footwear. And so this is the biggest thing that we need to look at. Um, and we talk uh, uh, or see a lot of patients that are in the hospitality industry, um, our uh, servicemen and women that are on their feet longer um, in defence, as well as um, police, our firefighters, um, ambulance. Um, they're going to be um, more likely to have these concerns if they're not in. Um, you know, a, a really stable shoe during that time. When we are still getting pain in those stable shoes, we then want to start looking at our other options, um, such as like the orthotics or inner soles that I mentioned earlier, which can be customised uh, to our foot to take a bit of the pressure off um, any structures that are of concern, but also to increase the efficiency of which our muscles are working as well. We find that this can really help to decrease the pain. Sometimes we may benefit from a steroid injection and um, or cortisone injection, a lot of people know it as, uh, and that can help to decrease the inflammation. Uh, a lot of people say that it's masking the pain and we sort of say, yes, it, it, it's taking away that um, pain, yes, but it's also having an anti-inflammatory uh, effect as well, just like having a Voltaren, uh, or another anti-inflammatory is, which can be quite helpful as well. So generally the steroids um, you know, can really help to uh, decrease that pain uh, if required. Something that I do a lot of are uh, different types of injection therapies with local anesthetic, and depending on the condition, they can be quite successful as well. And that's something that we have a bit of a chat about in consultation to see what our options are. Other options are amniotic fluid injections, uh, which can be really quite successful when we go about undertaking those too. So there's different, definitely a few different options when we look at heel pain uh, to treat those conservatively. The biggest part of that is ensuring that we have the correct diagnosis to start with. 
When we are not um, having a good outcome from uh, sort of this conservative type of care, we then need to step it up a little bit further. And that may involve being placed into a moon or below knee um, walking boot, um, which can help to take further pressure off. Uh, a, big, a big part of this is definitely um, decreasing your activity or changing your activity but as well as that, um, just ensuring that we can, um, you know, take all the pressure away as well as strengthen uh, any muscles there that need to be strengthened too. When all of this is exhausted, we then need to start looking at surgical options. And there's a few different surgical options that we look at depending on your condition, uh, as well as uh, what, what your imaging is saying. So that might be from X-ray, ultrasound or an MRI as well. For patients that are um, have a inflamed plantar fascia, sometimes if we are not having a good uh, result with our conservative care, this plantar fascia can be released. And we generally do that through a minimal incision uh, through the bottom of the foot. And that allows us to just uh, release that uh, structure that's under stress and allow you to start recovering from that in a more enabled uh, way there. Uh, that does involve being in a boot uh, for a few weeks afterwards. Other options uh, to do with when we've got a heel spur, uh, and a lot of people think that the heel spur is the cause of their pain. It's not necessarily the cause of their pain, um, but as a result of just a really uh, tight muscles underneath your foot that are actually pulling the bone and causing that spur to occur. Now, when this is the case, and it is thought that the spur is contributing to your pain, then that spur can be um, reduced via a minimal incision again, uh, where we, we sort of grind that uh, bone to make sure that it's uh, not as prominent anymore. And we do that in conjunction with the release uh, of the plantar fascia up in the stressed tissue underneath, if that is the case. Other contributors to heel pain may be nerve sort of concerns, and it really depends on uh, where that nerve entrapment is as to how we manage that but generally we'll, we will release structures that are causing tightness on that nerve. And if there's any ganglions or cysts in that area, they may need to be removed as well. So I hope that helps for um, the question asked by KC um, around their heel pain and some options that might be able to help. Um, I'm just seeing if we've got, yeah. And um, just checking to see who's put some comments in. Um, so CJ um, has arthritis in both feet and ankles and they're asking what can be done as it is very painful. So arthritis is a really tricky one. Depending on what joints it's affecting, um, it's generally going to be progressive and first of all needs to be checked to make sure it's not something that is um, severely progressive such as our rheumatoids or psoriatic arthritis. It may also be linked to gout and all these type of conditions need to be managed medically. And so the first point of call for those is um, generally through um, the GP, but having that opinion um, is something that we can provide as well and allows us to <clears throat> give you an idea of whether that is a, a good option um, or whether we want to explore that further. And there's different hallmarks or red flags that we look at which sort of suggests that it is worth undertaking further assessment for this. And we can refer you through to the correct person to undertake that. When we're looking at arthritis, depending on what joint it is, um, is how it's managed. So when we're looking at um, both feet quite broadly, um, quite often we see it of the big toe joint, which can be managed quite effectively with orthotics. Um, and with sort of a physiotherapy or exercises. Um, when we're looking at the midfoot, uh, depending on what joints uh, we're looking at, uh, there's different options that we can look at, including orthotics. Uh, and when we're looking at the ankle, there's uh, different things again that we can look at to just reduce the movement or increase that efficiency. And that can be re um, relating to orthotics, can be steroid injections, um, some people will do dry needling. I like to do a lot of um, low-level laser therapy or infrared light treatment. Um, but there's, there's quite a few different uh, options that you've got available there. When it's quite an inflamed event, we can look at a, um, a CAM boot 
um, to take that pressure off um, completely uh, for the short term and just see how you respond to that as well. And that's generally undertaken with the, in, in conjunction with a, a steroid injection there as well. When we're starting to step it up a little bit further, there are surgical options uh, available. These don't need to be um, necessarily fusing of the joints, but they can be uh, taking any uh, bony prominences away. Um, but generally we'll have to have a bit of a look at the imaging to provide the better option or best option uh, for you in this case. When we're talking about um, sort of broad arthritis, it's really about settling that down. And so initially that may be undertaken um, uh, through a, appropriate um, biomechanical efficiency of the foot. Um, so that's increasing muscle strength and the structure of the foot through orthotics and good footwear, um, which we've explained a little bit already, um, but also uh, just through making sure that we might modify activities um, a little bit more. So rather than maybe going for a run, uh, you may find going for a swim a little bit more comfortable when we're, when we're looking at that. I've got another question here um, by JC, um, who sent a photo through. Um, they've got callus on each foot at the bottom um, of each little toe. And um, the question is, will these develop into bunions? Uh, generally wearing flat shoes with soft tops um, and it sounds like a bit of canvas type shoe um, which isn't as ideal uh, and they generally um, so they soft tops but don't rub on them and generally don't hurt um, should I get rid of them and if so what is the best way to do this um, because the hard skin keeps growing back so um, first of all, for any surgery, if it doesn't hurt, it's really difficult to say, let's do surgery, because there's always a risk with any surgery that it may not go as planned, and that may mean that we don't want to um, undertake the procedure to start with. We just need to weigh up those risks um, from the procedure to the risk of, risk of leaving it. There's a lot of procedures that I do that are prophylactic or preventative in nature, um, particularly for hammer toes, um, which are sort of curly toes. And when we undertake those, they're generally by minimal incision. They're very safe and very effective um, at resolving those concerns in the early stages. When we look at a um, bunion procedure, I would prefer to only do those procedures on patients that have got pain unless there's a very much a, a big reason why. The undertaking bunion procedures is, although um, a generally straightforward procedure, we don't want to make, we rely on our feet so much that we don't want to have any um, potential concerns there if it doesn't resolve. And I always work on, you know, if, if you're in um, eight out of 10 pain when you're walking, because of your bunions, then when I do the procedure and if there's still one or two out of 10 pain, that's a really good result. And then we can start looking at orthotics to decrease any further pain that may be uh, resulting. Obviously, you know, we, we aim to get that zero out of 10 pain from after surgery, uh, but it, it's not always the case. And so if a patient comes through with um, no pain and is just concerned by maybe how they look, it doesn't necessarily mean that we'll be having no pain after the surgery if it doesn't go as exactly as planned. So it's really important to have an understanding of that. When we look at uh, the photo there, um, it's a basically uh, a bunion of the little toe or the little toe joint more correctly. And that means um, like on your big toe joint, uh, that it is going to be a bit prominent and that's going to change how uh, forces work through your feet. So it's more likely that this area is going to have um, shear forces um, or twisting um, forces in that area. And that's what's going to cause the callus there. This callus can be very easily managed by your local podiatrist uh, and can be helped um, to uh, decrease how quickly it comes back by wearing orthotics with appropriate offloading and increasing the efficiency uh, that we uh, have your foot undertaking. So again, that's undertaken through orthotics and appropriate wide footwear. 
when we talk about footwear, again, it's that wide and deep toe box that we're requiring to really take the forces off of the foot and uh, decrease any wear or rubbing um, of that area. When we've got quite a wide foot, it, it is really difficult to fit. And so going through to sort of our um, athletes foot, rebel sports, um, and making sure that we're getting uh, appropriate fitting of your foot and sizing of your foot is really important to ensure that we don't have any other concerns there. Um, when we are needing to manage that because it is painful, uh, again, uh, you know, the orthotics are probably my first point of call and trialling those to see if they resolve the pain or decrease the pain. But generally bunions are a progressive uh, concern. And it may be that in you know, 5, 10, 20 years, they're a problem. But again, it may be that uh, in this case, I, I do feel that uh, the photos sort of showing that it may not progress too much further because it is quite a, a large bunionette or Taylor's bunion as we call it. When we are wanting to manage this, uh, management similar to what we do for a, a bunion of the big toe joint and through a minimal incision of two or three millimetres, we can make a cut through that bone uh, and move it back over a little bit and shave off a bit of that prominence as well. This will generally put the, um, you know, the, the foot into a narrower position and that fifth toe into a better position as well, which can really help to decrease any concerns there with the width uh, that we're looking at. When um, looking at those sort of options, again, uh, we can try to decrease uh, the pain uh, through those conservative options and then through surgery. And if surgery were indicated, then you, again, you're likely to be in a uh, post-operative shoe for about four to six weeks after the procedure. Uh, and then from there, um, carrying on. For these type of procedures where we are doing a, a cut through the bone, it can take a little bit longer to heal. And I'd generally say that most of my patients can be back to work in an office job at around that um, two weeks sort of mark. Um, but really, we're not undertaking any sort of running sort of activities for at least that, um, you know, two to three months, uh, generally, once we know uh, that we're, we've got that good bone healing uh, and potentially longer if required as well, depending again on the bone density and the bone healing that we're seeing. Um, if there's any questions there, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, I'm just going to have a bit of a check and see if there are any questions at the moment and um, go from there. So we've got a question there around bunion surgery and whether it's costly. Um, it depends on uh, sort of who you're insured with um, to how much money it might be out of pocket. What I would generally say is, um, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, resolving your concerns so that we can continue on um, with pain-free life. And really that just depends on you know, how much, uh, you know, that, that's worth to you as well. Uh, bunion pain, a uh, bunion surgery, sorry, is a few thousand dollars, but without consulting, it's hard to say exactly um, what procedure and option that we would be looking for as, as well. Um, ensuring that we undertake the right procedure for the right person uh, is, is really important. And um, from that, we're then able to quote uh, to enable that. Um, private insurance can help to decrease those fees. Uh, and it's, it's really important that we, um, you know, get the best outcome for you at the right time as well. I know um, some patients uh, for myself have come through um, that are, are young ladies in their early teens that are quite active sports-wise. Um, soccer players, um, for instance, uh, with tighter uh, shoes, uh, sports shoes, uh, are going to sort of more likely look at that option to enable them to start um, getting back into their sports and enjoying life. Now, that's quite an easy decision to make at uh, that age, um, whilst we can uh, keep, keep ensuring that there's uh, plenty of activity uh, whilst we're young as well. So it's just weighing up those, those options as, as well. Um, what I'm thinking um, is that there's been quite a few good questions. There's been some questions that have come through via email as well. 
Um, there's quite a fair bit of information on different conditions on our website, southcoastfootsurgery.com.au. Um, you could also send an email through to admin at southcoastfootsurgery.com.au. Um, I'm thinking, um, seeing the good response uh, to this video, is that we might hold another q and A in a, a couple of weeks' time. Uh, and I'll make sure that I put that up on uh, the um, Facebook page as well. So make sure that you like the page, share it if you like this video, uh, so that we can uh, share some of the information that we've gone through today, but also help other people answer any questions that they've got to. Uh, I really appreciate it um, for um, uh, being able to share sort of the knowledge around and your help enable in being able to do that is, is really quite um, important for me. Um, if you would like an individual treatment plan or individual questions, then please feel free to uh, get in touch with us. Um, I am currently offering um, a free initial video consultations. There are terms and conditions uh, surrounding that and they can be found on my web page as well uh, so that we can make sure that everything's fine there. Uh, I'm going to have another look to see if there's any questions. No, it doesn't look like there's any more questions at this stage. Um, if anyone would like more information, please feel free to contact South Coast um, Foot Surgery um, through our um, website or through email, and we'll be able to get in touch with you uh, through that as well. Uh, in the meantime, stay safe. Uh, don't forget to keep in contact um, with those you love, and we'll hopefully have a bit of a chat further in the, uh, the weeks uh, to come as well. Thanks.